Hi everyone, my name is Bara and until recently I didn't think I was very creative. I fell victim to the myth that the creative genius is just born creative, but what I've found recently is that there's this whole other perspective that you can learn to be creative and it just takes work. So lately I've been reading some books on creativity and the one I want to talk about today is called Steal Like an Artist by Austin Kleon. It's quite a light read, it only took me just under three hours and there's lots of quotes by famous creatives such as writers, directors and visual artists as well as graphics to help you understand the content. So the subtitle is 10 things nobody told you about being creative. Now most of the ideas weren't completely new to me, but this book is actually over 10 years old so they might have been back then and I just learned them from someone else later on. Either way, it's always good to get a reminder. The main idea behind the book is to encourage those who don't think they are creative to go out there and create work. Nowadays nothing is original anymore and all creative work is in fact a remix of what came before it. Although he puts emphasis on crediting others for their work, the author refers to using other people's ideas as stealing and suggests that instead of evaluating ideas as good and bad, we use the words worth stealing and not worth stealing. This idea that you don't have to create something out of nothing, but rather everything is a mashup of other people's ideas, makes it a lot easier, at least for me, to get over the creative block. Austin uses the analogy of a child being a remix of their parents. While there are influences of both, a child is more than the sum of their parents' traits. The practical advice in this chapter revolves all around the artist as a collector of ideas. You should always carry a notebook and a pen, an audio recorder or just the camera on your phone and collect ideas that you like. The result will be what Austin calls a swipe file. Use it whenever you encounter a good idea or when you need some inspiration. As a circus artist in the age of Instagram, I see Instagram saves as a form of a swipe file. I save loads of reels on Instagram, be they dance or aerial moves or I just like the style but then I rarely go back to them. I should really find a way to organize those into collections and whatnot so that I can draw inspiration from them in a more systematic way. Another way to get inspired by those who came before you is to climb the family tree of your creative lineage. Lineage? Lineage? Creative lineage. Pick someone who you admire in your discipline and learn everything there is to learn about them. I guess with writers you would read their books, with circus artists, this is a bit trickier, but you can go see their shows, take their workshops, or follow what they share online. Then pick someone who your hero admires and learn everything about them. Another idea that really helps me be creative is that you shouldn't wait until you're this creative genius. You find out who you are in the act of creating things, so fake it till you make it, dress for the job you want, not the job you have, you know. When babies learn, they start by directly copying people around them. Do the same, start by imitating other artists in your field. In circus, this would be learning the exact tricks you see others doing online. Then as time goes on, you find your voice and add your own flair to these. Instead of trying to be like your heroes, you should try to see like them. Rather than stealing their style, steal the thinking behind it, get a glimpse into their creative process. If you copy from many different people, no one can attribute your work to one specific source and it will seem really original. A slightly different approach to creating art is to make the work you want to consume. Design the products you want to use. If you like a book or a movie, write the sequel. Or fan fiction, as we call it. In performing arts, create a show you want to see or come up with tricks that you think the world is missing. Think about what the creatives you admire missed in their last piece of work. What could they do better? To give an example from my own life, a couple months ago, a friend taught me a move on aerial rope. And as soon as I got into the position, I had this idea to come out of it a different way. A sort of fall out and swing out of it in a dynamic way. I haven't seen this anywhere before and it's the type of movement I want to be creating. Often when you start creating from scratch and you tell yourself that you can create anything you want and the possibilities are endless, rather than creating anything you get into a creative block. It's great to tell yourself that you can create anything but you can't do it all at the same time and in the moment it just kills creativity. So a more practical approach can be seeing creativity as working with limitations. Rather than what you put in, look at what you leave out. These limitations can be around the time you're allowed to create in, the colors a painter uses, or the body parts a circus artist uses. One of my friends created this card game for parkour where you draw three cards and it gives you a move and how to do it. So for example, a jump with your hands behind your back. I have done an aerial choreography 
choreography workshop before, where the task was to find a position you're comfortable in and just explore it for a while. Eventually, we all found ways to get in, out and to move in this position. Work with the time, space and equipment you have available right now. The author emphasizes how important it is to have hobbies and side projects. Some productivity gurus will tell you that you should focus on a single passion and not let other interests distract you. But according to Austin, your numerous passions don't take away from each other, but rather feed into one another. The same way you can combine influences from different people, you can combine ideas from your various fields of interest. In the circus world, I've seen quite a few people play musical instruments on aerial apparatus. So don't discard any of your passions, let them talk to each other. When you're sick of one project, just jump to the next. There is a quote by Steve Jobs that goes, You can't connect the dots looking forward, you can only connect them looking backwards. So even if your interests seem really disconnected and irrelevant now, a great idea might come out of them one day. And if you'd like to learn more about balancing multiple interests, I've made a video about Emily Wapnick's guide for multipotentialites called How to be Everything. Check it out here! Towards the end of the book, the author provides practical life advice on how to make it as a creative. The tips here range from keeping yourself on track using calendars and logbooks to choosing your life and business partners. I really liked the section on well-being and financial literacy. There is this romanticized idea of the creative genius who's always broke, takes drugs and sleeps around. But in reality, being creative takes a lot of energy, so you should eat well, sleep enough and exercise. This is even more pertinent for performing artists whose body is the vehicle for their art. You're not going to be a very good circus artist if you're always tired. It's the same with money. While most people don't like talking about it, the sooner you learn about personal finance, the better. Live within your means, save as much as you can, and say no to consumerism. This is the approach I'm taking. I am currently paying my way through circus school with savings and the little work that I can fit around my schedule. The less of this money I spend, the longer it will last me and the more training I can do without worrying where my next paycheck will come from. Personal finance for artists is something I want to look into more and there are a few books on the topic that I'm interested in. Most of the people who talk about personal finance and investing are in well-paying corporate jobs getting a steady paycheck every month. But if as an artist you could invest the little money you do make and have it work for you so that you can keep creating the work you want to, then why the hell would you not want to do that? There's a lot more advice in the book that I did not cover in this video, so go ahead and read the book if you'd like to know more. Most of the advice is meant as an array of tools that you can use but don't have to. Different things work for different people, so like what's useful and leave the rest. There is also a section on sharing your work online, which Austin wrote a whole another book on called Show Your Work. I read that book too and made a video about it, so check that out here and in the description if that's something you're interested in. That's all from me today, so see you in the next video! Bye bye!